So here I am, sitting in the right seat of a Cessna Grand Caravan as a first officer. Myself and my captain are flying 12 passengers to Jakarta and we're getting ready for our descent. However, we have a few problems. There is what could be best described as a supercell in front of us. A thunderstorm of 50 miles in diameter, stretching up to 60,000 feet in height has engulfed not only our destination airport, Halim, but also all of the other airports in the region of Jakarta. Bandung, our en route alternate, is covered in a separate thunderstorm. The weather had already deteriorated at a point of departure, Chili Chap, and neighbouring New Saruru. In fact, we honestly don't know of any airport in the whole of Java which isn't submerged underneath severe weather. We tried to get weather updates from air traffic control However, the frequency is saturated with calls from other desperate pilots. We hear the crew of a Lion Air Boeing 737 scream, Mayday! Mayday! whilst declaring a fuel emergency. Myself and my captain discuss our options. Option 1, we could always fly back to our point of departure. This seemed like a tempting solution at first, however, as far as we could have known, we may well have had the same problem there in regards to the weather. The only difference being is that we would now have 350 pounds less fuel in our tanks and no instrument approach for guidance in the bad weather. Option 2, we could land off field. In very exceptional circumstances, landing in a random field away from an airport is also an option. We could have conducted a precautionary landing over the various fields below us to inspect for threats such as rough ground and electricity pylons before landing. However, it was apparent that the only fields below us were small rice paddies. There would have been a serious chance of flipping the aircraft over during landing. However, we also had option three, fly straight through the center of the storm. The weather was horrendous in Halim. However, at least we had an ILS, an instrument landing system. This ILS would have provided guidance for us towards the runway, which was important given that we wouldn't have been able to see a single thing outside. The obvious downsides of flying straight through the centre of a supercell included severe turbulence leading to loss of control, hailstones, lightning strikes, microbursts, torrential rain and low visibility. I'll let you know what option we picked further on in this story. However, first, let me tell you about how I got into this situation in the first place. It all started a few years earlier, after I just completed my training to become a commercial pilot.